Hello my loves, I'm Ashley, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. Today I have some book recommendations for you all, but these recommendations are going to be in the if you like this thing, then read this book style format, which I don't do too often, but I feel like we have some good ones for spooky season. <laughs> So when I've done this before I have done it between books, so comparing books to each other, but this time I decided to do book comparisons to movies and TV shows that remind me of Autumn and give you book recommendations based on those, mainly because I have been watching some more films recently which I don't do too often, but one of them in particular really reminded me of one of my favourite books and it just inspired me to do this entire video. And obviously all of these recommendations can work vice versa as well, so if you have read the book then you would probably also enjoy the TV show or movie that I recommend. So let's start with the pairing that inspired this entire video. I recently watched the movie Kill Your Darlings because I basically saw this one as a Dark Academia recommendation and decided to give it a go. Ended up absolutely loving it. It is pretty much the standard plot of a Dark Academia story in which there is a very small group of friends within a university or college of some kind and somewhere down the line one of them ends up murdering someone and we end up seeing the build-up to this event. But as I was watching this film, Film, I just could not help but think of one of my favourite Dark Academia books, These Valent Delights by Mike and Emma Ever. I try to shove this in as many recommendations as possible throughout this time of year because I think this is so underrated and I think that everybody who likes Dark Academia as a subgenre would absolutely love this book. All I wrote down in my notes for this as a comparison was very similar stories, gay. <laughs> pretty much sums it up. It is a very similar story. Not in the way that it's repetitive or like you've read the same thing before, but in the sense that, you know, something bad has happened and then you go back in time and you find out why. But the relationship dynamics in this book specifically are very intense, very isolated in a way, because even though it's between two people, it's very much them versus the world. And you very much get wrapped up in that, just like you do in Kill Your Darlings. It's about these two people going through college, getting wrapped up in each of the stories and things getting more and more more intense between them as time goes on. As I said as well, it is also gay, both of them are, and I do just think that they are so similar that I couldn't help but think of this recommendation and I couldn't help but love them both just as much as the other. I really want to both reread this book and rewatch the movie, so <laughs> Immaculate Dark Academia vibes. Very much has the almost pretentious appreciation for whatever it is they're learning. You have lots of debates about what's considered academic and you know all that kind of stuff, so I love this book, I love the film, would recommend them both. <laughs> In a very similar vein, I do have more Dark Academia recommendations, but I feel like this one's kind of obvious and I have actually paired two books with this one because the one I initially thought of, I haven't actually read in its entirety, so I didn't feel like I could fully recommend that one, but it'll all become clearer in a second because the other movie I watched that was on the same vein was The Dead Poet Society. This is a very popular one. I have been meaning to watch this one for years. We basically follow this class who gain a new English teacher and he changes the way that English is taught. He shows them what it's like to be passionate about poetry and writing and just literature in general. He does things in a very unorthodox way compared to the rest of the teachers in this college and some of the boys in this class do ultimately end up forming their own kind of dead poet society after being inspired by their teacher. Now the book that came to mind for this was actually If We Were Villains by M. L. Rio and this is the one that I started but I haven't yet read in its entirety so I don't feel like I can recommend fully right now. I instantly thought of this one, one because Dark Academia, but two because this one has a very intense appreciation for Shakespeare so it just reminded me of having a close-knit group of classmates really appreciate a particular form of literature because they basically just recite Shakespeare any given point in this book. As well as that, in the Dead Poet Society, one of the characters is very into drama. He wants to act and be in theatre. So do most of the characters in this book as part of their appreciation for Shakespeare. And they are all just kind of grouped together under this intense love and passion for the subject. But there is also the darker twist to the story, which is standard with dark academia, hence the dark part of the academia. So I feel like this one would be better suited, but it did also remind me of The Secret History by Donatar, which is 
a very clear comparison between these two. These two get compared all the time. This one is also about a group of classmates who have a very intense appreciation for a very specific subject. In this case, I believe it is ancient classics. It's been a long time since I've read it, so I can't remember it too well. But in this one, you basically have a group of, I think, five students within this very tiny class who are studying this subject. They've all been adopted by this teacher and inevitably things end up spiraling, things go wrong and we end up finding out why that is. So if you've read either one of these or both of them and you're looking for a film to watch, maybe The Dead Poet Society would be a good show or vice versa. If you've seen that film and love the vibes, maybe pick up these two. A TV show that I rewatched recently was American Horror Story, which I really struggled to pair things with American Horror Story because it's such a wild TV show in how gory it is and how explicit it is and how strange and bizarre it is that I don't think I've read anything that compares, truly. But I tried, so here is my attempt at that. Of course I had to try and think of one for the iconic series of Coven, because witches. It's my jam, this is what we do. So for this one I ended up pairing up a book which I actually haven't spoken about in a while but I really really love and again it's another one that I think is very underrated because this one is Witches of Ash and Ruin by E. Latimer. This one follows a coven of witches who are based in a very small remote Irish town. Our main character being one of them, she struggles with OCD after being outed as bisexual in this very small Irish town this very conservative, it's very much seen as a thing to be against, so she is really struggling with this. But the thing getting her through all of this is the promise of having her ascension day, which is basically the day that she will come into the full reserve of her powers. However, shortly before this happens, some witches from another coven actually come to visit them, basically bearing death omens. They are coming to warn them that there is a witch hunter out there, gradually killing off witches one by one, and they need to figure out what to do about that. The comparison here, we have a witch hunter, we have covens, we have lots of tension between women but also a very deep bond that's there that means that this tension, while people do kind of grit against each other sometimes, they would still end up defending each other against any outsiders. This also has quite a dark atmosphere just like American Horror Story does, probably not in the same way but this one definitely pulls through in the dark and eerie atmosphere, especially because there is so much about death and omens. You have some quite grisly scenes in here, things that could very well end up in a story like American Horror Story. So I think if you want a more tamer version of American Horror Story Coven in terms of gore, then maybe try this one because I think it would definitely pull through in terms of story and vibes. So there's your recommendation. <laughs> And then I also wanted to try and give a recommendation for American Horror Story Murder House because that's personally my favourite season and is also the very first season. So in that one we are based around a house in which ghosts get stuck. Anybody who dies in that house can't leave it, basically. They're just there. Family moves in, they end up discovering all this, weird things happen, you know the drill. And so I decided to pair this one up with my favourite gothic classic, The Turn of the Screw by Henry James, in which we have potential, depending on what you believe, ghosts who are also stuck in this big manor house. In this one we follow a woman who is going to work as a young governess of these two children in Bly Manor and the longer she spends there the more convinced she becomes that these two children are being followed by ghosts and she just really wants to protect them and get them away from these ghosts because she believes that they're dangerous. This definitely has the psychological spiral, unreliable narrator, all of the tropes that make you ensure that what you're reading is actually true. <laughs> it also has all of the gothic eerie vibes, you've got ghosts just popping up left, right and centre but you don't actually know what's real and what's not and I just think this is a really really good gothic classic. Like I said it's my favourite, it's so clever but you don't realise why until the end. It's one that's really fascinating to study as well and with this whole theme of having ghosts stuck in a house not being able to leave or pass on further and having somebody from the outside coming in and discovering all of these horrors I decided to pair these two up together and hopefully that would be a good reflection of each other even though they do have kind of different vibes. This one's definitely a lot slower than the ones I've recommended so far but I just think this one's so good. Also obviously you do have The Haunting of Blind Manor which is a TV show which is literally based off this book so if you want an obvious one to watch there's also that too. <laughs> And then finally we have one which I wasn't too sure about when I paired them together initially but then the more I thought about it the more I was like Actually, yeah, I'm confident in this comparison because the TV show for this one is Umbrella Academy, which <laughs> I love. I haven't actually finished the most recent season, but this one is basically about a guy who adopts children who seem to have powers and he raises them as his own in the Umbrella Academy so that he can nurture their powers and they end up just getting involved in all sorts, really. <laughs> so for this TV show, I decided to pair it with 
Vicious by Vicky Schwab. The reason why I initially paired these together is because they both vaguely have Dark Academia vibes. I wouldn't say this is Dark Academia because you spend very little time within the actual academic setting, but the importance of research and information and knowledge and development and all of those things are very much a thing that pervades throughout both stories and is at least the very starting point of both of them as well. In Umbrella Academy, you have this beautiful decor of the actual academy. It's just... Oh, I would love to just live there. So while the Dark Academia vibes in Umbrella Academy are pulled through that way, in Vicious it's kind of the beginning of everything and you do have this almost pretentiousness of all the characters who have been raised into this setting and they all have a kind of competitiveness as they all try to prove their worth within this setting which does then lead on to the character relationships which did actually remind me of both the TV show and the book because all of the relationships in Umbrella Academy and Vicious are really quite intense in that it starts out with people being quite close to each other having quite a lot of common but then they just gradually become more and more like rivals as this competitiveness does end up being a driving wedge between them as people become more powerful it becomes more of a gap between them and because of the rivalry it ends up being so intense and I feel like that is done best in this book in particular but there's a lot of talk in both of them about people being underestimated, people being on the sidelines, not really part of anything and in both stories you do have a cast of characters who all have different abilities that are all trying to figure out how powerful they can be with those abilities and so you do get to go through both stories learning about the characters powers and learning with them basically so yeah not a comparison I expected to draw but I feel like they are pretty similar when it comes to the basic stuff. <laughs> So with that being said, those are all my book recommendations based on movies and TV shows that I think would be perfect for the autumn seasons or around Halloween, anything like that. In the darker evenings, this is when you should consume all of this media. <laughs> Do let me know if you have read or watched anything I've mentioned in this video or if there are any kind of comparisons that you want to make. Do leave them down below. If there are any TV shows or movies that you think are perfect for this time of year, do leave those recommendations down below as well because I haven't watched too many of them so I am always trying to catch up. And if you want to leave a comment to say hi but you don't know what to say then leave me the little ghosty emoji because we haven't had that one yet for spooky season so have the little ghosty come and say hi. <laughs> but for now I will love you and leave you and let you get on with the rest of your day so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did then remember to leave a like and a comment so let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already then please consider doing so. Down in the description box you'll find information to all the books I've just mentioned, all of my social media and other bookish stuff as well so be sure to check that out if you haven't already but for now I hope you have a lovely day and I'll see you next time with a new video. Bye!